Apache land was rich and promising, and there were men who would take this land for themselves. At this time, the government appointed a new superintendent of Indian Affairs, Johnny Flagstaff, idol of millions, hero of a dozen best-selling books. He held the power to keep the peace or start a war with the Apaches. headlines your idea, Ferguson? Maybe. That's the faults of the town, Jeffers. Those are my thoughts. Why should the Apaches have the best land in Arizona? Ferguson, you're head of the committee that invited Flagstaff to Tucson. Are you going to ask him to break the treaty? We've asked him here to review it, yes. Cochise won't give up that land. He won't have anything to say about it. Fort Bowie is bulging with troops. They'll handle him. Tom! Tell them how wrong they are. You're an Indian agent, Jeffers. That's bottom rung on the ladder. The government will go by what Johnny Flagstaff decides, and you will too. I went to the Apache stronghold to assure Cochise that while the treaty was being questioned, it would not be broken men who would break this treaty? Do they think my warriors have become old women who will not fight for our land? It is a sacred bond agreed to by the president of your people. This man, Flagstaff, is a friend of the president. And who questions this treaty? A committee of businessmen in Tucson. But that does not mean that Flagstaff will side with them. You know what belongs to you, and I know what belongs to me. What if I should say, this horse is mine. You would say, no, Cochise, it is mine. Anger would grow in your voice, and you would try to take him back. Armando! Come here. Here, Armando. This man says the horse is his. I say it is mine. He will let you decide. See, my brother, a horse or a rich land. These businessmen would not ask a third party to decide ownership if they were not sure they had his favor. Johnny Flagstaff is not a small boy. Let us hope you are right. Here, it was wrong for the small boy to give me the horse. There's a job to do here. And when I leave your beautiful country, I hope to have the same friendship. Just get us a fair shake with the Apaches, Johnny. That's all we want. Ah, my friend, but don't forget, the Apache wants a fair shake, too. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde Ferguson, Mr. Flagstaff. Yes, sir. Nice to do business with you, Mr. Ferguson. Oh, meet Carl Hudson. Yeah, how do you do? Howdy. Uh, Mr. Bailey, we mustn't overlook the author of those great books. Thank you. Tom Jefford, Johnny Flagstaff. Glad to know you, Superintendent. 
Well, now, wait a minute. No fancy titles. I'm just playing Johnny Flagstaff. I'll study the grievance here in town for a couple of days, and then you and I'll ride out and have a talk with Coach East, huh? Fine. Mr. Flagstaff? Yes. Sure as how you had on your shooting iron. Oh, uh... Gee, Mom, isn't he fast? That's what I say, Johnny. How about really showing him something? Folks, now watch this. Sonny, throw this coin up in the air just as high as she'll go. I'll catch it. You ready, Mr. Flagstaff? I'll make it high, son. Gee. <laughs> In the well, now, that's a nice souvenir for you, Sonny. You just keep it, yeah? How was that, folks, huh? Johnny Flagstaff spent three days in Tucson. Then it was my turn to present the Apache side of the story. I took him through peaceful villages and showed him as much of the vast reservation as possible. I started to like the man. He was far different than the show-off I'd first met in Tucson. Might as well pitch camp here. Clear water in that creek over there. Take up to meet Coach East tomorrow. Uh, no hurry on my account. Hey, Tom. How'd you like me to buy you some corn cakes? I'm good. Lau can eat a stack that high. He wrote about me frying corn cakes in a book called uh, Johnny Flagstaff and the Rockies. You ever read it? No. Borrow the book from Bobby Kirby when I get back to town. <laughs> you have no idea how many people wrote in and wanted the recipe. We made a deal with a flower company. They used my picture on the box. Lau said there wasn't any use in not picking up the extra money if we could. Why not? Oh, me. Timbers! Timbers! I'm sorry, Tom, but, but, uh, my gun's jammed. Where, in your holster? Well, uh, you, you, your, your horse is right in my line of fire. You had plenty of time to shoot. You yelled for help before the cougar jumped. I don't know what happened. I felt kind of dizzy. I saw you shoot in Tucson. You didn't get dizzy then. It's the one thing to shoot at a target. It's another to shoot at an animal that could claw you to death. Or a man with a gun in his hand. I guess I'm no great shakes at being a hero. I was nothing until I met Lyle. But I could shoot good. And people seemed to like me. Lyle figured we could hook on with a Wild West show if I had a reputation. So he wrote a book called Johnny Flagstaff, Indian Scout. Well, I figured there's a lot of money in politics. This job came along, so... What about the Apache Treaty? <laughs> what about the treaty? Was there a deal made? Has there been a deal? Well, in a way. But I'll see the Apaches get another reservation just as good. I promise. You miserable fraud. You've been putting on a show. The whole thing was decided from the very beginning. It's not just me, it's, it's other people, important people, with a lot of money involved. You don't know Cochise. He'll burn Tucson before he'll give up that land. What are you gonna do? I'll take you to Cochise. Let him decide. Oh, no. No, if he finds out, he'll kill me. No, he won't. He's too smart for that. He knows the whole country would be up in arms against the Apaches if anything happened to Johnny Flagstaff. 
Yeah. Folks sure would be mad. Now's your chance to really be a hero, Flagstaff. Yeah, I know. But I've never gone against Lyle before. See Cochise? Yeah, Lyle. I met him. What do the Apache vulture have to say? You must have seen the stranglehold the Apaches have on our land, Mr. Flagstaff. What is your recommendation about the treaty? I found the Apaches to be a friendly and honorable people. And I think it would be a national disgrace if we don't live up to that treaty. Is this? I don't know. Is it best day for Tucson since the treaty was signed, Mr. Flagstaff? This calls for a celebration. Get your best duds on, folks. Come on, Johnny. You better write your report to Washington. Sure, Lyle. Guess you're mad at me, huh, Lyle? Well, that land really does belong to the Apaches. You big, stupid lummox. Do you know how much money it just cost us? Yeah, I know. But, Lyle, you could write another book. Johnny Flagstaff and the Apaches. Now, folks would like to read about me being good to the Indians. Uh, look, Cochise made this bow and arrow for a little Indian boy, and the boy gave it to me. Now, folks would like to read about that, wouldn't they? What did Cochise do? Nothing to kill you if he didn't decide his way? They wouldn't kill me. No, Lyle, it's like Jeffers said. The whole country would turn against them if anything happened to Johnny Flagstaff. You know, Johnny, I never thought about that. Come in. You better start running, baby. Oh, give me back that 10,000 advance you got in Prescott. You can mine that much gold out of the reservation in one week. But Flagstaff verified the treaty, slammed the door in our faces. I'm very good at opening doors, Ferguson. I've made it my business. I'm just starting my new book. The Treacherous Death of Johnny Flagstaff. This is a story of a betrayal, broken promises, and an arrow. The arrow was a gift from an Apache boy. Johnny Flagstaff broke it to show that he, too, wanted peace with Cochise and the Apaches. So what happened? The ungrateful Apaches kill him. You want the land, you'll get it. Even General Grant would go for a gun if anything happened to Johnny. He'd call out the whole army. Well, yeah? When are we going to go back east? Oh, maybe tomorrow. You know, Johnny, I think maybe I ought to meet Cochise. Just so I'll know what to write about him in the book. 
Oh, sure, Lyle. Oh, you'll like him. I'll take you to him. Lyle, this is just like old times. Then we'll get a Wild West show and go to Europe. Well, we always figured on it, Lyle. Yeah, maybe. How did you like your breakfast, Mr. Flagstaff? It would take the fine words of Mr. Bailey to describe it. Our humble thanks, ma'am. Glad you liked it. Lyle, uh, don't forget about our young friend in the book. Are you writing a book about Tucson? Yes, that and the Apaches. Mr. Bailey wants to meet Cochise, and I'm going to take him to him. Did you hear that, Mom? I'm going to beat a book with Mr. Flagstaff. Don't get so swell-headed. You forget to do your chores. Now, go along. Well, go along. Go on. <laughs> Billy's writing a new book about Johnny Flagstaff and the Apaches. And I'm gonna be in it. And I'll bet you you'll be in it, too. Well, that's fine. Say, where is Johnny Flagstaff? He just rode out in the reservation. Well, he didn't tell me he was going. Mr. Bailey's with him. Bailey? Did they go alone? Yeah. I guess he wants some material for his book. will break to the side as soon as they hit that clearing. And remember, there's a special prize for the man who gets Flagstaff. What if the Apaches hear the shooting? Uh, a few dead Indians will make the fight look better. But get Flagstaff. And then get off the reservation fast. Now you two men spread out. Get him? No. You keep him pinned down. I'll get him. you're dead. What's well, dependent on the Apaches? shooting, Johnny.
gentlemen, it was a treacherous plot. Not that I think of my own life, but of what could have happened to the Apache Nation. And I want to thank my two very fine friends, Tom Jeffers and Cochise, for their valuable assistance. Well, goodbye, everyone. Hope to see you all again soon. You'll come back, Mr. Flagstaff? Yes, someday, my son. Adios! Johnny Flagstaff. He'll probably go down in history as a great national hero. But as well he should, my brother. He is a small boy no longer. A great Western action in the Big Valley. And at 5 Eastern, the young widow has designed.